Let's continue our discussion of bonding by taking another example, another example of an organic compound, okay, that is ethylene. Ethylene has a formula of C2H4. Uh, this is a possible structure of ethylene, which is the simplest alkene possible, where there is a double bond between the two uh, carbon atoms, okay? Now, according to the VSEPR model, that double bond, just like multiple bonds, are counted as a single effective electron pair. So therefore, around each carbon, in this case, there are three um, effective uh, electron pairs. Let's recall again the electronic configuration of carbon. Carbon has an atomic number of, of six. The electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. And again, just like the practice that we have done before in the case of methane, let's try to distribute the valence electrons, electrons located in the outermost shell in orbitals. And if you remember, it is, it is valence electrons that are responsible for bonding, electrons located in the highest principal quantum level. And there are four in this case of, of carbon. So this is the 2s orbital, and these are the three um, p orbitals so these are the three p orbitals this is 2p x this is 2p y and that's 2p z and this is the 2s orbital and of course there is an unpaired electron in each of them so that's one two three four and because there are four valence electrons in this case of of, of carbon now, we have mentioned already that there are three effective electron pairs around, around carbon, in this case of, of ethylene. Therefore, not all of these orbitals will mix, only three of them. In that case, then, a 1-2s orbital should mix with only two 2p two orbitals to get three brand new orbitals, three hybrid orbitals, okay, which would be called sb2 hybrid orbitals, okay. So these are the sb2 hybrid, hybrid orbitals, and they are, the type is sb2 because these hybrid orbitals are obtained as a result of mixing or hybridizing 1s and 2p orbitals. There is an unpaired electron in each of them. And again, if you recall this concept of hybridization, it's mixing of orbitals and the new orbitals or the new or the hybrid orbitals are of intermediacy in terms of in characteristics between those of S and P orbitals. And if you look carefully, the 2 PZ in the atom of carbon was left unmixed in this case or unhybridized. So it should be a native P orbital and that's the, the 2 PZ which is native in characteristics including of course shape and, and energy. So that's the 2PZ, and we can describe it again as native, whereas these ones are, are hybrid. So there are, on each carbon, there are three um, uh, SB2 uh, hybrid orbitals and one 2PZ native um, um, uh, orbital. So we can now draw then a picture of, of bonding, in this case of ethylene. There are three SB2 hybrid orbitals around each carbon so something like that would be reasonable okay so three sb2 hybrid orbitals around each carbon and if you notice that the sb2 hybrid orbital from this carbon overlaps with the other sb2 hybrid orbital from the other carbon this is end-to-end -end overlap or head-to-head -head overlap, which constitutes a sigma bond between these two uh, carbon atoms. Um, if we continue with the drawing of, the, of, of orbitals, okay, this is the hydrogen atom, and it is the 1s orbital that's responsible for bonding, in this case, from the hydrogen atom. So that's the 1s, which overlaps with the sb2 hybrid orbital from each of these um, two carbon atoms. And again, if you look carefully, the, the 1s orbital, from hydrogen overlaps with the sb2 hybrid orbital from carbon it's end to end overlap or head to head overlap constituting again um, a sigma bond 
So this is a sigma bond between hydrogen and carbon, and obviously that's a sigma bond between the two carbon atoms because um, it's formed, the sigma bond is formed by head-to-head -head overlap or end-to-end -end overlap. So that's another sigma bond which is, which is obtained as a result of overlap between um, Sb2 from carbon and 1s, and that's another, this is another sigma, that's a fourth um, sigma bond which is formed by overlap of an sb2 orbital and one s from uh, from carbon so therefore um, there are um, uh, four uh, sigma bonds in this case of of of, of ethylene which are formed as a, as a, a result of of orbital overlap head to head overlap or end to end overlap so far we have not uh, 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 talked about the native p orbital. Now, in each of these um, uh, uh, carbon atoms, there is a native p orbital which can be drawn like that. Okay, so this is the 2p z of that carbon, and this is the other 2p z of the other carbon. Now, these p orbitals are parallel with each other, and there is a single electron in each of them okay so that's the single electron or unpaired electron these electrons now get shared by the two carbon atoms and this electron sharing is not only above the sigma bond but also it's actually below okay now this type of bonding as a result of electron sharing okay by electrons located in these unhybridized p orbitals constitutes what's called a pi bond so there's therefore a pi bond between these two carbon atoms, in addition, obviously, to the sigma bond, which is formed by head-to-head -head or end-to-end -end overlap. This takes us to the conclusion that in each carbon-carbon double bond, there is one sigma and one pi. Um, the uh, geometrical shape around carbon, in this case of ethylene, is trigonal planar. The bond angle is roughly 120 because of the fact that the shape um, is trigonal planar. So to conclude, there are four sigma bonds, in this case of ethylene, and there is one pi bond, and in the carbon-carbon double bond, there is one sigma and one pi.